QEP. This is your video lecture, our second lesson. Properties of metals and nonmetals. It's E3 and E4 in your textbook. So we're going to be talking about properties of metals and nonmetals, and the definition of a property is how the element looks, its physical properties, and how it reacts, its chemical properties. So you will see some element squares that uh, represent elements on the periodic table of elements. We have nickel, copper, zinc, silver, cadmium, mercury, gold, and platinum. And uh, we'll be looking at uh, luster, which is the shininess of a metal. So you can see at the bottom, uh, under the word nickel, you can see a, a screw, and that has more of a silver shininess to it. As uh, And when you look at the copper, you can see that the copper has more of a reddish luster or shininess to it. So we're going to, you're going to be responsible for four properties at the M1EP level. Uh, one, the first one is how they look. So metals can be shiny or dull. Uh, it, when you take a look at the picture on the left, you see a pile of pennies. All of them are dull. They have oxidized, combined with oxygen and water in the air, uh, and there is uh, a buildup of a new uh, substance on the surface. All of those are dull in color, except for one penny, which is shiny. Uh, it does not have any, have any uh, new substance on the outside, on the surface. When you look at the picture on the right, it's an old Volkswagen Beetle, and you notice right away, you know what that is? It's rust that is built up on the surface of the iron. So the, the Beetle is made out of iron, and when iron is exposed or, or left out uh, or comes in contact with oxygen, there's a chemical reaction that occurs. This is called oxidation, and the rust uh, uh, is a substance that's formed from the two elements, iron and oxygen, reacting, combining together, and you get iron oxide, and this iron oxide is that red color for us. Okay, here's an, a look at the periodic table of elements. Again, uh, we talked about this, and you have a copy of this in your notebook. So on the left are all the metals. And on the right are the nonmetals. But what's interesting to point out is that there is a black line, kind of looks like steps. And that is a boundary between the metals and nonmetals. But the elements that are brown, that have an element square that is brown, are metalloids. They have uh, properties of both metals and nonmetals. And one of them that's important to point out is silicon, which is in computer chips. Uh, silicon at times can conduct electricity and at other times it will not. And that's very important in our laptops, computers, and mobiles. So to remind some of you, uh, the three types of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. And the second property of matter that we want to know is the state of matter at room temperature. So most elements are solid at room temperature. All of the metals are solid at room temperature except for mercury. Mercury is a liquid at room temperature and mercury is used in thermometers. Uh, most of the gases uh, at room temperature, uh, sorry, I should say this differently. Most of the elements that are gases at room temperature are found on the right side of the periodic table. So please uh, remember that. So changing states of matter. When heat goes into an element or a compound, it can change its state of matter. Or when heat goes out, it will change its state of matter. Uh, so we call this energy in and energy out. So the melting point is the temperature at which a solid turns to a liquid. And the boiling point is the temperature at which a liquid turns to a gas. So from our lab, you've already learned that the melting point of water is 0 degrees Celsius and the boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. It's very important. You 
going to need to remember it. So here's a graph. This is the graph that you should have uh, drawn from our lab last week. And uh, during changes in state, the temperature stays the same. So when we were adding uh, energy by heating the ice, it changed from a solid to a liquid at zero degrees Celsius. And it stayed at that temperature until all of the ice had turned to a liquid. At that time, the temperature began to rise until it reached 100 degrees Celsius when the liquid turned into a gas. So that water began to boil at 100 degrees Celsius and it would continue to boil and stay at 100 degrees Celsius until all of the liquid was gone. The third property I want you to know, which is also in your textbook, is if the metal or the element is magnetic or not. And magnetic means to be attracted to a magnet. So of all the metals, there are only three metals that are attracted to magnets. And these are iron, nickel, and cobalt. The fourth property of elements, uh, metals and nonmetals, and I want you to remember is that chemical uh, is uh, chemical reactions that occur with molecules. And uh, we talked about the way that the periodic table is structured, and we have uh, columns that go up and down, and those elements in the same column react in similar ways. Uh, something else I want you to know is that both metals and nonmetals react with oxygen to make oxides. So example one is carbon plus oxygen making carbon dioxide. Example two is magnesium plus oxygen making magnesium oxide. So magnesium oxide is a compound, and if you remember, compounds are two or more different atoms that join together. Remember, molecules are just two atoms that join, two or more atoms that join together. They can be the same atom, okay, or they can be different atoms that join together. Uh, lastly, the formula, every, uh, every molecule has a formula. So the molecule, or the uh, formula for magnesium oxide is simply MgO. Uh, practicing uh, writing formulas in, uh, as part of our classwork this week. So as a review, um, metals are shiny, solid at room temperature. Uh, two words that are not in your textbook but I want you to know are malleable, which can be hammered, flat. They take the shape, you can mold them into different shapes. Another word is ductile, which means it can be pulled into wire. And also, metals have high conductivity, which is the ability to transfer heat or electricity to another object. And that's why we make wire out of metals, because they can conduct electricity very well. And a couple things about nonmetals. They're the opposite of properties of metals, and they are not shiny. They are poor conductors, mostly gases at room temperature, and they are solid, or the solids are brittle, which means that they can break very easily. They're not malleable, they are not ductile. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Please remember to get all of the notes copied into your notebook. And I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.